It is indeed a matter of great honor and pride for me to be standing before you to welcome you on behalf of Department of Community Medicine and Public Health at the Institute of Medicine for the fourth annual Nutrition Innovation Lab Scientific Symposium, an event that we've been co-hosting along with Johns Hopkins, Nepal Agriculture Research Council, Tufts University, and Nepal Technical Assistance Group. To introduce my department, it is one of the oldest departments at the premier government medical school in the country, the Institute of Medicine, and our department comprises of 28 strong multidisciplinary faculties who are engaged in community-oriented learning, not only for medical students, but we have a very thriving uh, bachelor in public health program as well as master in public health. Um, and for the last two years, we have also initiated the master in health promotion education and perhaps more relevant to this symposium, Master in Public Health Nutrition. I'm very pleased that our students are engaged and they have really enjoyed welcoming you this morning, manning the reception along with the NTAG team. Now coming back to the theme of the symposium for this year, which is Minding the Gap along the Agriculture and Nutrition Pathway, I got to tell you that it invokes so much interest. We had so many re registrants in the very initial few weeks that we had to close down the registration to limit and to perhaps give us more time to decide. What I have seen over the last four years is that the scientific rigor, the interest has been increasing over the years. To just uh, uh, tell you some of the numbers, in 2012, we had 145 participants uh, that increased to 250 by 2013 and 300 by 2014. And this year, we are going to be about more than 350. Similarly, when I reviewed the, the paper submitted, in 2012, we had only 20 abstracts that, that were submitted, which increased to 40. And I shall be telling you about the 72 abstracts that were submitted this year. Uh, Poster presentation has also been a, a, a part of this, uh, of this, the scientific discourse. The first year we had only three uh, posters, which increased to uh, 11 and then 21. So for this year, for the scientific session, we had 72 abstracts submitted. And these abstracts were reviewed by a committee comprising of faculties, not only within the country, but also international universities who have selected 20 abstracts for oral presentation and 24 for poster presentation. The selection was based on uh, relevance to the theme of the conference and also scientific rigor. This year, uh, what is also different is that, you know, following from our uh, experience of last year, we have a students only session, which is going to happen on day three. And uh, it is uh, uh, the first half of the day is going to be tackling dietary assessments, the techniques, the innovations, and its application at the community level, which is followed by poster presentation for students. And this year, we've selected 16 posters, which are going to be again evaluated by faculties um, and the best ones awarded. This forum, I believe, gives an opportunity for students to showcase their research and also engage in dialogue with the experts in the field for clarification of methodology, for showcasing their research interest, and also learning how best to, uh, to showcase their uh, findings. The theme which, uh, of the conference which uh, um, Keith has just outlined to you, has been focusing and continues to ro revolve around linkages of agriculture and nutrition, but also noting the gaps in research along this pathway. The belief that agriculture contributes not just to food production, but also human nutrition and health underpins the ongoing effort to make agriculture policies and programs nutrition sensitive. However, you're also aware that increasing production of crops alone are not often enough 
to accelerate, accelerate reduction either in hunger or malnutrition. Our knowledge on links along the chain from agriculture to nutrition and their pathway remains unclear and this is clearly uh, uh, where the, the, the research organizations have to play a role. The quality as well as the volume of research on the topic must improve to bridge the, the evidence gap and to, uh, and to tell us how to leverage the agricultural poten uh, potential to promote enhanced nutrition and health. This may mean, as, as pointed out by my uh, previous speaker, enhancing the methodological rigor, um, ensuring that appropriate nutrition outcomes are selected in relation to understanding the mechanisms and not just the pathways, and perhaps uh, increasing uh, in, and perhaps link agricultural research more closely with public health systems research to fill the knowledge gaps. So what does this mean for Nepal? I really believe that understanding our context, contextual realities, particularly geographic isolation, increasing inequity, poverty, particularly among the farmers, and different kinds of in inequities that exist from caste-based to location and, 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 and ethnicity. And um, how, how does this affect um, the, the livelihood? Particularly, I'm reminded of women. We have seen that in Nepal there has been increasing engagement of women in agriculture, and this definitely takes, their, takes toll on their time how this may affect their ability to care for themselves and also uh, you know, um, how the, could that affect the, the pathway between agriculture interventions and nutrition for women as well as children is something that must be explored. There is definitely room for better quality, qualitative research to help explain the barriers and incentives for adoption of different interventions to throw light on why interventions work and why they don't. The national discourse in the recent years on maternal and child undernutrition has definitely elevated and energized since Nepal was identified as the early riser in the global scaling up nutrition movement. Funding, therefore, has shifted towards agriculture and multi-sectoral actions, and nutrition intent are high on national as well as the agenda of our development partners. Resources from different sectors, especially health, water sanitation, hygiene, agriculture, and education, local governance, are being utilized to design and implement the programs. However, I strongly believe that we must have a stringent mechanism of identifying and documenting what works, what is it that makes things happen, and what the barriers are. Because Nepal definitely has a lot to contribute to the international scientific uh, uh, community as regards with um, our experience of multi-sectoral nutrition plan is concerned. So I would at the end urge you to please pay attention and perhaps remind yourself and think about what are the, the gaps as you, as you uh, listen to the deliberations and presentations. What are the linkages that have been proven that we could, we could work on and what remains to be unpacked. So with these few words, I'd like to end here and hope that you have fantastic two days and excellent deliberations. Thank you so much.